This morning, the inspirational story of high school football coach Ed Thomas, who led his Iowa's team to two state titles. In May of 2008, a massive F5 tornado ripped through his town of Parkersburg. Seven people were killed. Hundreds of homes were destroyed. The roof was ripped off the high school. The gym was demolished. And it was Coach Thomas who inspired that town to rebuild. But less than a year later, another tragedy struck. Our people in our community are excited because for two hours tonight, fellas, something's going to be normal again. It was a return to normalcy the town of Parkersburg was in desperate need of in September 2008. We're ready to go, boys. We're ready. Leading the charge, beloved football coach Ed Thomas. Where are you from? But just nine months after that night, a much more personal and stunning tragedy in town. A man walked into the Parkersburg High School weight room and shot Thomas multiple times. Ed Thomas, age 58, died a short time later at a Waterloo hospital. A troubled former player, Mark Becker, murdered Coach Thomas in front of 20 students. We find the defendant guilty of murder. Following his swift trial, Becker was convicted of murder and ordered to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Oh, you know what you're gonna do, let's go! In 34 seasons, Coach Thomas had 292 victories, won two state championships, and sent four players to the NFL. We're not trying to just how to teach a science and math and history and how to play the game of football. They're trying to in some way make a difference in their life. That's why I do what I do today. He was more than a coach, he was an icon. Ed Thomas was one of my heroes. Remembered for his impact on his students and his community. The reason I respected him so much is because what he did for all of his players, and that's teach them not only the game of football, but teach them the game of life. The Thomas family recently co-wrote a book called The Sacred Acre, The Ed Thomas Story. His wife, Jan, and son, Aaron, join us now, along with Mark Becker's parents, Dave and Joan. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. I Thank know you. It's, it's not easy, but we appreciate you joining us. Um, you all watch this story again. You've certainly heard all this many more times than you ever want to. Um, Jan, let me start with you. Um, two years later now, when you watch him, coach, still watching to inspire those kids, you still think about him. Oh, I think about him every day. Remember the great times. Yes. Um, Aaron, two years later, you look at your father as a hero, an inspiration? Oh, 100%. I think, you know, nothing's changed when I was in third grade. And I knew I wanted to go into education. I think the whole time growing up, I saw the impact Dad had on young people and knew that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, so I went into the same profession as an athletic director and a coach now. And, uh, you know, and now going back to AP, uh, taking my father's job, it's, you know, a chance for me every day to try to continue what he started and hopefully to carry forward what he was all about. When did you decide you wanted to, to put this book out? Well, I think for us it was more, we hadn't really thought about it, but people continued to come up and ask us, and people were interested in my dad's story and, and who he was. So at that point, I think we decided, you know, we could, some good could come out of this terrible event that's happened. Uh, you know, if a guy in a town of 2,000 people in the middle of Iowa can have such an impact, you know, maybe we can challenge other people uh, to hopefully see how they're living their life, see who they could possibly influence. This was a tragedy that in many cases would separate two families for life. And you'd never talk again. Um, Mark's parents are here as well. What, what made you want to work on this book, work with them, bring this town together? I uh, shared this with my, uh, with my wife here. A few evenings ago, uh, Coach was this humble man, just an incredible encourager, motivator. And I can remember in the practices back when I played for Coach, you were tired, you were thirsty. He could convince you there was a victory. There was something good going to come out of this hard work. And so when I was asked to come along, I decided something good can come out of this story. And uh, that's why it's not easy, but we're worth helping all we can. This town came together, still comes together. Absolutely. Um, what do you hope people take from this book and your story? I would like to say that <clears throat> I think all of us could agree on this couch that with faith, all things are possible. And that even though you can go through a tragedy such as our families have gone through, you do not, you do not give up on God and you do not quit working together to make it a better place and make it better for, for everyone. It's an extraordinary story. We thank you all for joining us this morning. If you get a chance to look at this book, I would encourage everyone to do so. 
Um, you all um, are, uh, as we talk about that book a little bit here, um, is it something that you hope people, obviously not just in your town, but, but all across the country, end up looking at yes. soon enough? Yes, I would love, I would love to, uh, people to realize how this, this humble man who walked the walk uh, uh, could uh, influence kids, um, motivate kids to 100% of their abilities, and uh, um, an incredible mentor of mine, Coach, was. With the extra time we have here, I, I wanted to, how is Mark doing? He's doing well. Um, he's getting the medication and the counseling that he needs. They constantly monitor him to keep that medication level. Uh, it's, it's an illness that will never leave our son. And it's a, it's a tough thing because it's a very serious illness they don't have a lot of answers for. But he has a, a quality of life. He Thank does. you all again very much.